Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Tamara. We are in the kitchen once again. I have been working on trying to get as much stuff prepped up and restocked as I can. One for the holidays and then also just for winter coming. I want to make sure that, you know, I've got a lot of stuff prepared for us. I'm also going to be sharing just some weekly homemade prep and stuff that I like to make some baked goods as well. So we are going to be working on stocking the freezers. We're gonna be working on canning up a few things as well. So nonetheless, I hope you enjoy and let's get right on into it. It is that time of year where there is finally green berries in the store. So I got four bags. I got these for $1.49 a bag, I believe. So I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna give them a rinse, pick out any bad ones that need to be picked out, and then I'm just gonna get them added into the jar. I like to do, um, when I made this last time, it was really good. I think I did like a cup and a half or so of the cranberries and then I did some sugar and then I just filled it up with water and processed them in the jar of course you can add no sugar you can add you know more sugar that's just totally up to you um, I feel like about like a fourth a cup to a half a cup is normally pretty good I do like to dilute this with water um, so I'll like dump this into like a pitcher and then I'll you know, put a little bit of water in there and then I just, if it needs more sugar, I will add more, but sometimes it's sweet enough just with this and then like the little amount of sugar that I do add in. Um, that's just gonna be up to your taste, but we really enjoy having juice, um, you know, doing, I like to do cranberry and I also like to do um, a grape. So like if I have extra grapes, um, I like to do that as well. Or if I have like, if somebody gives me grapes or something, you know, I can use them. Cause sometimes Winston don't like grapes, sometimes he does. And so that's one of a really good way to use up something and, you know, turn it into something else. And so we really like having juice, home canned juice on hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these washed and get them added into the jars. So I'm gonna do a cup half per jar. I'm going to go ahead and go around and do a cup first. Let's see how many it's going to do. Of course, the more cranberries you add, the more concentrated it's going to be. And from my research, there's two different methods. Of course, you can, you know, juice the cranberries and can just the cranberry juice, or you can do it this way. This way, you do have to let it sit on your shelves for a little bit. Um, to let you know that juice come out um, you know all that cranberry flavor and everything um, like you know give it like a month a month and a half before you go to open these but I'm telling you they're so good and it's so easy and you have fresh juice sugar to mine. Don't forget that I am an affiliate through Four Jars. Tried and true, y'all know I love their stuff. Still at 100% seal rate. If you use my code everyday10 at checkout, which their link is always in the description box, you can save you some money. And it's great, greatly appreciated because I also make a little bit of commission off of that. And I take that commission that I get for the products that you guys buy, I just take and buy me more. So it helps me out as well, so I appreciate it. Okay, so I'm just gonna get the rings, 
the water's still boiling for them. I'm going to get these rings on, and then I'll go ahead and get these in my canner. Now I'm going to make some biscuits to have in the freezer ready to go. If you buy frozen biscuits already from the regular grocery store, um, or if you just like having biscuits on hand, I love bulk batching biscuits, having them ready to go in your freezer. You can pull out however many as you need at a time and it just saves me and you have homemade biscuits like on demand. <laughs> so this definitely makes the homemade food convenient. So I'm just going to use the recipe that I've been using for a while. I love the two ingredient biscuit dough recipe. It is my personal favorite. I'll have the recipe linked down below for you guys. Of course, you could use any, you know, whatever your favorite biscuit recipe is. Um, this one, I just love it. It's so simple. It's two ingredients. It's heavy whipping cream and self-rising flour. That is it. If you don't have self-rising flour on hand, you can make your own. I always keep both on hand. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do two batches for now and see how much heavy cream I have. Um, we'll judge it off of my heavy cream, but I'm going to go ahead and mix it in here and then knead it for a little bit. And then of course, just cut them out as normal. And then what I like to do is lay them flat on a pan, wrap them with saran wrap, and we will flash freeze them for several hours. That way they're already, they're going to be frozen, you know, singles. That way they're not all sticking together in a freezer bag and it helps it be more easier for you just to, you know, pull two out, one out, you know, however many you need whenever you're making biscuits. I haven't counted them yet, but I ended up getting this full tray. So I'm gonna kinda move them around a little bit just so they're not sitting on top of each other. All right, so that way they don't get stuck to each other. And then I'm just gonna wrap it with saran wrap and then just stick them in the freezer. Give them a couple hours in the freezer, and then all you gotta do is just get them out and put them in a Ziploc baggie. You can store them in a you know glass or plastic container, but by flash freezing them, you know they'll be able to hold their shape individual, so that way you can pull out however many you want to at a time. Okay. 
it up here. Put these in the freezer. We got the dryer going, but these are done. They actually sat for four or so hours. I got distracted, but they are ready to go. So I'm just gonna put them right in these Ziploc bags and then just store them right in the freezer. So easy and you have biscuits on demand whenever you need them. So I ended up getting 30 biscuits stocked in my freezer. We have got some free apples, whole box of them. This is about 12 pounds. Um, they came from an orchard. I'm guessing they're local, probably local uh, or local-ish <laughs> from who that I got them from. Um, but I thought it would be fun to make some applesauce. Applesauce is not something that I've made yet. So with these apples, I think that it would be perfect. Some of these are looking pretty rough, but there's still really good spots on these. So I'm gonna go peel, I'm gonna wash, peel everything, cut out any bad spots, and then what's left is what we will process. Now, there is something that I want to try because I seen, I watched a video, I can't remember if it was on TikTok or where, but they took and peeled the apples and cut out the bad spots and they just stuck the whole thing, core and all, in the crock pot. And they let it all cook down and then they ran it through the food mill so that way it took out, you know, the core, like the seeds and like the, you know, the bad stuff that you're not supposed to. Um, technically, I guess you could do that with the peel because the peel, you know, would come out with the food meal. Um, but where some of these have got bad spots on them, I am just gonna go ahead and clean them up. Um, but we're gonna try that. I thought that sounded super inter interesting. You know, I've watched videos and like read blogs about, you know, people doing applesauce canning, like making and canning it. And y'all know me, if I can skip a step and make it easier, I'm definitely going to. So instead of taking the time to cut up all these apples, put them all in the crock pot and add a little bit of sugar and then just let them cook down and make some applesauce. So we'll see, we're gonna do this together. We'll see how it is. But I'm going to go ahead and get these washed and peeled and cut out the bad spots. That's what we're going to do first. So we actually had to leave. <laughs> so I quickly chopped up these apples. I, you know, cut out a lot of the bad spots that I've seen. And I just put them all in here. It's going to cook down, so I'm not worrying about getting out a second crock pot. I'm just going to let it slowly cook down. And eventually the lid <laughs> will fit all the way on it. Um... What was the other thing I was going to say? I'm going to wait until it cooks down a little bit more before I put any kind of sugar in it because I'm curious. You know, this apples might be sweet enough where I don't even have to add any. So I'm going to let it cook down a little bit um, and see and taste test it and see how it is before I add any sugar. But I've just got it on low and I'm just, you know, letting them slowly cook down. I do have a towel over it just to cover, you know, where the, the gap from the lid. Um, but I'm just going to watch them, you know, keep it on low throughout the night and just let them cook all the way down. And I'll bring y'all back tomorrow morning. So it is actually 3 o'clock the next day. These took forever to cook down. But they're finally cooked down soft enough. So I'm going to run them through my food meal, and then I'll bring y'all back. So I ended up getting this bowl full. I love doing that. Cooking it down in the crock pot, letting the food meal do the work. Let me tell you, that was so much easier 
And yeah, the food meal takes time, you know, but I didn't have time yesterday and I had time today, so it just worked out. So if you have, like, if you're ever in that situation, just throw it in the crock pot. Let it cook all down and then run through the food meal. Like, it is like the perfect texture. So I taste tested it, of course. I think it needs just a little bit. So I'm gonna do um, a fourth of a cup. Stir it in, taste test it, and see if that's good enough. But this was so easy and it looks really pretty too. It's dark, but I don't know. I've never made homemade applesauce before, so. Oh, there's a chunk. How'd that get through? Oh, that's sugar. So I'm gonna can mine in jelly size jars. I ended up adding another fourth a cup to this, so there's a, a four. So there's a half a cup total of sugar in this bowl. It tastes so good. So I'm just gonna fill my jars and get these in the canner. So I definitely underestimated the amount of applesauce in that bowl. <laughs> this ended up making a lot. So I'm just going to wipe the rims with vinegar and get them in my canner. I'm gonna make some hamburger buns and hot dog buns. I'm just taking a full recipe and I'm just gonna split it in half. Since it's just the three of us, it works out best that way. So I'll do half hamburger buns and half hot dog buns with this recipe. This is the first recipe that I tried for like hamburger buns and it's the only one that I've used. It is my favorite. So I just bloomed my yeast. That's what I just added in, which is the milk, the sugar, and the yeast. And then I'm going to add in an egg, flour, and then some salt. I'll have the recipe linked down below for you guys. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this going in the bread machine and let it do its thing. While the bread machine's doing its thing, I actually have both bread machines going. I didn't share 
uh, me making the bagel recipe. I've shared that a ton. Um, I'll just add clips in of like me doing it. Um, I'm going to work on a double batch of chocolate chip cookies. Well, the cookie dough to have ready to go to bake whenever I need it. I've done this before. Absolutely love this. It helps, you know, you might have company coming over last minute or you may need to take something somewhere or honestly just having a homemade cookie whenever you want one. Going ahead and having the dough ready to go in the freezer. Love it. <laughs> uh, just, you know, just like if you're getting it from the grocery store, um, you know, you already, you know what's in it. You make them yourself. You have it ready to go. Um, I just like following the recipe on the back of the packaging. It's never failed me, so I've always just stuck to that. So I'm just going to follow the recipe on here. I'm using semi-sweet chocolate chips, and we'll get them scooped and get them ready for the freezer. Got my cookie dough all ready. So I'm just gonna flash freeze these just like I did the biscuits. I just take a scoop, scoop them out. You can like roll them, you know, smoother. It don't bother me them being this way. I save myself a step and I don't roll them. So I'm just gonna scoop all of these out and then we'll wrap them up get them put in the freezer for a few hours and then we'll do the same thing like the biscuits and just get them put into baggies I do have a question so I am working on you know trying to get rid of not fully but you know not use as much bags um, plastic bags trying to cut back on it we'll say that what do you use to store your stuff in the freezer and i'm not talking about you know like even vacuum seal bags like i'm trying to cut out like i'm considering buying like glass and using those in the freezer to store you know things versus storing them in bags or you know whatever so let me know what you use what works I worry about even if I got plastic containers, you know, those are reusable, but I worry that they'll they might break in the freezer. So y'all let me know what you use. I feel like glass is my best option. I need to invest in some more glass containers that have good lids. That way I you know I can store like you know the biscuits and like stuff like this. That way, you know, the lid can open up easily. I can get out what I need and then, you know, close it back up and put it back in the freezer. So, but baggies is something that is a struggle because we use them a lot. I did, for a while, I was using re, like, reusable bags. You could wash them. But after storing stuff in the freezer, they would not zip back up. So, I gave up on that. Maybe it was just the brand, you know, though. If you have like a tried and true brand that you've tried that, you know, holds up in the freezer. Because after I stored a couple things in the freezer, they, like I said, once I got it back out, it kind of just like ruined the bag and I couldn't, it wouldn't zip back up again. So. I don't know. But I'm just gonna finish all of these. I'm gonna have to get a second tray. I may have to put these in the fridge though and do one tray at a time because I can't double stack these because then it will smush. So I'm probably just gonna have to do one tray at a time. My first batch of cookie dough is done. Let's 
so I'm just going to get them right in my freezer bag. And then I can pull out however many I need when I need them. And they are so good. And then I'll just continue this with the rest of that batter. I probably will bake some though, just because, you know, sounds like a good idea. But that's it. It's so easy. And you can do this with any cookie recipe that you want. Definitely worth it. My bagel dough is done. I didn't share this with you guys because I forgot to film it and I've shared this a ton on my channel. Um, I just use my milk and honey loaf recipe and I just turn them into bagels. I can normally get 12 bagels out of the batch. I have shared this in more detail. I will have I'll have that video linked down below for you guys. But these are definitely a weekly staple. And I've started taking orders for a few things. And this is a favorite. Everybody loves the bagels. So I'm going to do cheese bagels. I'll have the milk and honey loaf recipe linked down below as well as um, a video that kind of shows this in more detail. Sorry, the, uh, the city or whatever is coming around and sucking up all the leaves that are on the side of the road, so that's what that loud noise is. <laughs> but I'm just going to continue rolling these into balls and then I'll shape them into bagels get them dipped. I like to dip them in baking soda water. I know a lot of people that do sugar. There's people that do honey. I just, I haven't tested out anything else. I've just used the baking soda because we like it so well. Um, these are so good.
our hamburger dough is done. I'm just using the same tray that I did for the bagels. No sense in dirtying up more dishes. So I'm gonna do half hamburger size or style and then half hot dog style. Here's what, what they look like. They ain't the prettiest, but they run taste good. That's all that matters. <laughs> I'm just gonna cover them and let them do their final rise before I stick them in the oven. It's about 30 minutes. I'm gonna make some homemade tortillas. I've got some water here. I'm just going to put this in the microwave until the butter melts. And the recipe that I'm using, I will have linked down below for you guys. I originally found it on TikTok. Um, I will try to, I'll, sh I'll link the TikTok, but then if I can find her like recipe that's typed out, I will try to find that as well. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and get this in the microwave. Now I'm just gonna add in my flour. my salt and baking powder. And then I'm just gonna slowly add in our water and butter mixture and just get it incorporated until it forms a dough ball. I just kneaded it until it came together and then I'm just going to 
Cover it with a towel and let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes. The buns are ready. You can egg wash them if you want to. You can add toppings. I, we're just gonna put these in the oven. Okay, I'll let it sit and chill. So now we're just gonna form them into little dough balls. This is what we'll roll out and what will be quesadilla. Quesadilla. Tortilla. <laughs> I can't, can't get my words right. So I think I ended up getting 11, which I know is an odd number, but I get it right. So I'm just gonna cover them back up and let them rest for another 10 minutes. I've got my iron skillet here, heating up. I'm just gonna take and roll these out individually. Now, the last time I did these, I did not roll them out thin enough, so I am going to try to get them thinner. See if I can do a better job <laughs> but that's what I'm gonna do for all of these and then I'll just get them in the pan in there get them cooking and then we'll have homemade tortillas I have heard people will freeze these I am gonna freeze a couple just to try it out I don't want to freeze like a whole batch and then you know it not work out for me so I'm gonna freeze a couple of them and that way I can try it and see how they are left over or thawed because that'll be something else too that I could keep stocked in my freezer I buy tortillas every single week so this is something else you know that I could have stopped and ready to go. Now it said that wait till little bubbles come up at the top and that means it's time to flip. I do have it, I have it on medium. So, we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and start rolling out this other one. All of my baked goods are done. Got our hamburger buns, hot dog buns. I just take and rub some butter on the top of them to kind of make them soft. And then we got our bagels. Now these are good frozen, but in my opinion, you need to toast them after you, you know, if you pull one out, thaw it out. You could probably, you could honestly even go ahead and cut them um, already and then you can pull them out. That may take a little bit longer to toast or put in the air fryer, but you know, toasted bagel is like everybody's go-to for breakfast. And so this is a good way that you could also stock your freezer with some um, bagels. I have froze these. Like I said, they do good frozen as long as you toast them. They're pretty dry if you don't, um, you know, if you just try to eat it as is. I feel like that goes for all homemade breads, in my opinion, um, because what I have tried to freeze before, it's not good unless it's like toasted or 
um, you know, buttered and made into garlic bread. That's just my experience. Um, that goes for, you know, these as well. If I have any extra of these, I'll freeze them. But when I go to use them again, I will um, butter fry them or put them in the toaster. And you know, it just, I don't know, it brings it back and it, it tastes just like, you know, you had it when you made it the first time. So this is something too that's really good to have in your freezer. And then the tortillas. So happy with the tortillas this time. Definitely got them thinner than last time. I'll just keep practicing, but they look so good. Super soft. Excited to have those this week. We'll use those with a meal one day this week or, you know, just for wraps and whatever. And I am going to freeze, like I talked about, I am going to freeze a couple of these just to test out and see if they freeze well for us or not. But I'm glad to have all of this stuff done. I really hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I know it's going to be super long, so I'm going to have to go ahead and end this video for today. And we'll continue on with some more prep another day. But I hope y'all enjoyed it, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.